Good afternoon, guys. It's working, bringing you a quick update on Bitcoin, and we're going to look at a couple other altcoins. Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. Uh, we're looking at Bitcoin to the U.S. dollar. This is the one-day chart on Coinbase, guys. And last time we spoke, Bitcoin, of course, had just gone parabolic here. We had cut through our resistance, as we talked about, guys. It had just bounced off our uh, the 67.50, uh, what was possible support did not, or excuse me what, what should have been possible support did act as resistance right there at that 6750 as we discussed last time guys um, and I think Bitcoin was sitting right around 7800 ish when we had talked last um, now I told you guys the area of resistance they you know obviously guys looking at this chart there's just not a whole lot of resistance um, which is a good thing um, a whole lot of resistance that we can talk about at least major areas of resistance you know looking uh, looking upwards guys looking north there's just not much there that being said you know obviously we were due for a correction we have been due for a correction for quite some time and we're gonna have to wait and see how this plays out guys there's, if there's one thing you know that when Bitcoin starts going parabolic you know really it's uh, I mean it's it's very difficult to stop until the market decides to take a break until FUD or excuse me until FOMO starts to uh, you know people start to come back to reality a little bit and then of course people say well crap I, I may want to to start taking some profits and we're kind of getting to that zone now where I, I remember last time guys I told you that the area of resistance would very likely be right here between about uh, uh, 8400 8500 8400 8500 because that was our prior swing high as well as as I told you we saw some confluence if I go swing high from this prior high all the way down to our swing low looking at our fib levels here we can see that that um, overlapped literally almost perfectly with our with the next major fib level if we're using the 10,000 this prior swing uh, swing high at $10,000 we're using that as our pivot high down to our pivot low the next major fib level was right there at that 786 which overlapped perfectly with this prior high at approximately 84 8500 depends on if you're using the body or the wick um, but either way you're looking at 84 8500 and you can see on the chart that's exactly where Bitcoin found resistance almost to the dollar right there at that mark so I'm using that mark now. Now that we have a confirmed area of resistance, which that now is, there's no question about it. We've tried to test it a couple times here, been rejected each time. Um, so now that we've got a firm area of resistance, guys, that's going to be my new, uh, the, the, new the new area that I'm watching, the new plane that must get broken. I need to see a daily candle, both open and close, above 8,500. If and when that does happen, I'm going to start to get, I, I, again, I think we're, we're due, we'll be due for another leg up. Until that happens, guys, it's a little bit risky to buy right here. Now, of course, if this thing goes parabolic, everyone's going to say, see, you know, I told you you should have bought down here, but that's not how TA works. TA is about risk management. Yes, it could go parabolic. And if it does, of course, it would behoove you to buy right now. But you don't have, an, you don't have a crystal ball. I don't have a crystal ball. All we have is TA, guys. And all we have is, is the money that you've worked hard to put in your pocket. And you want to spend that money wisely. You can either gamble and buy now, or you can wait for um, a, a buy signal, which an open and close above the daily, uh, a daily candle opening and closing above 8,500, in my opinion, would be a good buy buy signal. That's completely up to you, whether you're a gambler, whether you're a trader, or you know, or whether you're just a holder. Yeah, but, but know what you are, have a plan, and make sure you stick with it. To the downside right now, guys, I'm going to be watching as we zoom in here. I'm going to go to the four hour. <clears throat> Pardon me. I've been traveling a lot, guys. My throat gets a little itchy as I do that. Um, so I'm going to be watching as we zoom in here to the four hour, guys. We can see an extremely relevant zone is right here. This acted as an area of resistance and then acted as an area of support. If we do break down below this area, that's at approximately 7,500, 75, 7,600. If we do close below this area, guys, I think it'll be a pretty quick drop to at least uh, 67 to 6,800 down here. I do have um, a couple buy orders sitting down here, or a couple. I do have a buy order sitting down here. Um, so uh, when I say a couple, I mean, uh, what I meant by that is I've got buy orders starting from 7,600 and I've got them laddered down. My next area uh, to buy is down here at uh, 6,350. And then of course I've got uh, um, some buy orders right around 6,000. I discussed this last time. I'm not gonna go into it too further. I'm a little bit of a hurry. But, uh, but anyway, this is the area that I'm watching closely, guys. I think right now we're right between an area of support obviously right here at about 75, 7,600 and resistance right here at approximately 84, 8,500. And yes, that's a major spread. We're talking about a $1,000 spread. There's no question about it. But right now we're literally sitting in between the two guys. And I just, in, in my opinion, the risk to reward is not there until we have a daily candle open and close above 8,500. Coming out to the daily chart, guys. Of course, the daily chart does look bullish. Um, there's no question it looks bullish, guys. It just does. Um, if we come over here and we look at the, uh, look at the RSI, 
We can see the RSI here, guys, is giving us some, uh, you know, showing some leg. Uh, the bears are starting to come out here. We can see that we've got uh, clearly a um, what looks like a possible double top here. Um, and if we come back here and we compare that to price on the exact same timeline here, what do we have? Obviously, we've got a higher high. Looking at this, uh, we, we don't have a we don't have a lower um, a a uh, lower high, but what we do have is uh, is price double topping here. That's clearly bearish divergence right now. Um, now, right now, we're just showing some leg. You know, right right now, um, you just that, that's just something to watch. That's a warning sign. We'll have to wait and see how it plays out. But again, if we do drop below that 76, 7500, that's when I'm going to start to get uh, I'm going to start to get fairly concerned there. Um, looking at uh, I'll stand by. All right, coming out, looking at our moving averages, exponential moving average, looking at our Bollinger Bands here, we're obviously just, uh, you know, th this is what you would expect in a breakout, especially when transitioning into a bull market here. You'd expect the Bollinger Bands just to be completely stretched out here, and they are. There's no question that they are. We'll have to see how far they can stretch, but remember, like a rubber band, guys, you can only stretch them so much, and typically the farther they get stretched, the harder that... Um, that uh, that correction is now this is again admittedly the beginnings of what could be potentially a very massive bull run and i don't want to oversell it here guys the potential is there but that doesn't mean that that's going to happen but yes the potential is there so i'll have to wait and see um so you know it, it's it's it, typical ta in my opinion when people are starting to fomo in doesn't it, it just it can't account for that it can't account for how much um, you know how much people are going to start to foam a win, how much this, uh, uh, you know, and, and how far that could push this thing parabolically, especially in such a new market that just doesn't have you know, a lot of history to go by. So this is, you know, this is, uh, you know, typically if I'm just looking at this, guys, yes, I'd say this is extremely stretched out, this is extremely extended, and this thing should be correcting down to at least, you know, 7,000 or so, if not this prior area of consolidation right around uh, between uh, 5,000 and uh, 4,500. So yes, this would, I'd be looking for a pullback there. That being said, if this is in fact, you know, if, if this this thing could still go parabolic, as we discussed, guys, just on the fact that everybody is looking at this and every, nobody wants to miss out. Um, so, well, again, uh, just kind of taking this with a grain of salt. But looking at this overall, yes, this is extremely bullish. We've got the, of course, the 8-day. We talked about this last time. 8's above the 21, which is above the 55-day EMA. All very, very bullish. We've got the 55-day EMA now crossing above the 50 simple moving average. Again, all very, very bullish, guys. Um, there's just nothing bearish about this. Let's come up and look at... Uh, you know, I looked at this before. We looked at the monthly chart, guys. I discussed how the monthly, uh, month, we've got the monthly candle breaking above the uh, the 20 month moving average here. Um, so again, very, very, very bullish. Let's check out the weekly very quickly. Uh, let's see, looking at the weekly, uh, you know, not much has changed. Again, we've got the eight day uh, EMA that has crossed above the uh, 55 day EMA here. All very, very bullish. And we've got the 21 day EMA here, looking like it's on track to cross above the 55. If that does happen, again. All very, very bullish looking signs here, guys. There's just nothing bearish about this. All right, checking shorts. The last time we talked, shorts were down here. They were falling off the board. They've they've uh, started to uh, started to rise here. Just a, I don't want to say stacked here because that you know that suggests they're just starting to uh, you know just to stack without reason. They you know they're, they're they're starting to rise here a little bit. We'll have to wait and see if that continues. And at the same time, shorts are slightly rising. Now longs are starting to fall off the board here. And we'll have to wait and see kind of how this ends up playing out here, guys. But uh, but if this continues, and please understand, this is a very 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 big if. But if this does continue, with shorts continuing to fall off the board here, and they certain in, in or excuse me, longs continuing, longs continuing to fall off the board here, and shorts continuing just to, to rise here, especially if they just start stacking, um, you know, if that does continue, remember the market has a way of making the sucker out, suckers out of the most people. If that does happen and shorts are stacking, just like before here, that's going to be your signal that very likely we're going to break above that resistance area at approximately 8,500, and we may have you know another parabolic run here. We'll have to wait and see how this plays out. But that is a big if. I'm not saying that that's definitely going to happen. I'm saying keep an eye on longs and shorts. If this ratio continues, to, if this gap continues to rise, where shorts continue to, to, uh, to, to, to stack here and longs continue to drop, then that's going to be your signal that very likely the price is going to do, to uh, to rise again to try to liquidate those short positions. Now, shorts are slightly outpacing longs right now, not not too severely. Um, so I don't, I, you know, I'm not putting much weight on it just yet. But keep an eye on it. It's certainly going to be something to watch. I'm going to wrap Bitcoin there. Let's very quickly go over EOS. Uh, EOS definitely looking bullish as of now, guys. We had this breakout of this of our uh, of our wedge here, and then as I've discussed, we had this major supply zone between uh, 5.90 and 6.10, um, and we we had we have broken above it. Uh, by a wick now. We now we have not yet decisively broken this zone, so I'm I'm cautiously cautiously optimistic here. 
Um, and I, again, until we decisively break up above this zone, we have not broken it in my opinion. But this is a very, very relevant supply zone there. Um, and the fact that we are in it and starting to and, and maintaining in there, and we haven't rejected, we had a daily candle yesterday. If we zoom in here, close in that zone and we remain in that zone now. Um, and we've created, we haven't, we have price actually jumped up here to approximately uh, uh, 6.30, $6.30, guys. That's the highest it's been since September of last year. So there's no question we're starting to see some very, very bullish momentum out of EOS here, guys. And this is, you know, typically if this would to be a bull trap, I always warn about a bull or a bear trap when breaking out of a wedge here. Typically, the caution zone for a bull trap here, if it does end up breaking up here, is the prior high. And we have now taken out that prior high of this uh, of this wedge. So, you know, typically this is, you know, this is this is a bullish sign. This would indicate price should keep going up here. That being said, you also typically don't have a major supply zone sitting right above there, guys, and we have yet to break above that supply zone. So what I'm going to be watching to confirm, if you haven't already bought EOS, uh, it's a little risky buy right now. To confirm buying EOS, I want to see a daily candle both opening and closing above 6.10, above $6.10. That would put us above this supply zone. If that does happen, that's going to be your buy signal. And of course, if you're dollar cost averaging into EOS, we've got the block one announcement coming up. You know, that's certainly something to factor in. We've mixed a little TA with fundamentals. There's certainly that's certainly something to factor in and i've been dollar cost averaging in i've bought i've bought eos um now, obviously, I've, I've, I've owned EOS for quite some time and holding it in my long-term pulled portfolio. But I did, on the breakout here, I did buy EOS down here. And I added a little bit more to my position when I saw us wick up here and back down into this zone. Not much, just a little bit. But I'm, I'm again, still accumulating EOS um, in, the, in, the, uh, in the off chance that we, or not in the off chance, in the very real chance that this thing decides to go parabolic. Not just because Bitcoin is breaking out, but because we have that block one announcement coming up very, very soon. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap EOS there. Let's quickly take a look at BAT. Looking at BAT, basic attention token. Let me get on the chart I want here. Basically, there we go, Tether and Binance. All right, looking at BAT here, guys, we can see this is on the daily chart. Um, we can see that uh, uh, typically what I tell you guys is I tell you to watch the 21-day EMA. Um, and of course, we've been bouncing off above it here. When we broke below the 21 day EMA, that is always your first signal. When we have a decisive break, I want to clarify a decisive break below, that's always your signal that you want to, that very likely price is going to come down lower. We had that decisive break back here. We broke below it here, but that's not a decisive break. Remember, we had an open and close on the daily. Uh, on a daily candle, open and close below the 21-day EMA, which is this yellow line here, um, on uh, May the 5th. That was your sell signal. That was your signal that we were coming much lower. And of course, it did. We dropped down here to about 27 cents. Had a nice reversal here. Uh, right, didn't even it acknowledges slightly. Actually, I take that back. Very, very slight acknowledgement at 32 cents, but then continuing back down. And then, of course, we had that bullish move right back up. And what we uh, we we initially hit what was support started acting as resistance right here, as expected. And we've now just broken above that resistance. Now, we have not decisively broken above that resistance, and I'm a little bit concerned because we had this long candle here, this long, uh, what looked like a possible reversal. We had a little doji candle here, then a, a very bearish looking candle here on May the 12th, um, and then we've rallied a little bit since then on, uh, on uh, you know, with Bitcoin. Um, so we're currently above area of resistance. What I need to see, though, really to confirm this is I, as I really want to see a break above this prior high of this little microstructure here, which is, the, which is, uh, is at approximately 40 cents. So we can close above 40 cents, I'll start to get rather bullish, even though we do have a very strong supply zone right here between about 43 cents and 41 cents. Um, so again, it's a little bit of a risky buy, but if you're a, if you're a uh, if you're dollar cost averaging into bad, I do think it's a very very strong coin. We're going to be watching this very closely. We did see the 21 day EMA start acting as support. That is a very very bullish sign. Um, a little bit of a you know a little hesitant to buy right now, guys, because we are kind of stuck between support and resistance. We have not um, really broken above resistance at this point decisively. We're above it, yes, but we have yet to have a daily candle decisively open and close above that uh, that resistance. So a little bit of a a uh, uh, little bit risky. Um, but that being said, guys, um, it's certainly you cer you certainly could do worse in my opinion. I'm very, very bullish on BAT long term. Um, and once we clear this area right here, the supply zone, the top of which sits at about 44 cents. Once we clear that zone, guys, and we have a daily candle open and close above 44 cents, I do believe sky is going to be the limit. And I do believe that uh, that, that BAT's going um, to that gonna just take off. But if Bitcoin corrects in the short term, guys, BAT certainly will as well. So a little bit risky play right now, but still nonetheless a very strong coin in my opinion. All right, let's go ahead and close BAT there. Let's check out BNB very, very quickly. There we go. Uh, looking at BNB, guys, um, you know, BNB since, uh, um, uh, you know, Binance ha handled this hack so well, guys, in my opinion. I was talking to a, uh, um, 
um, I call him a friend, um, more of a friend online, but uh, but a very good guy. I was talking to him yesterday, uh, um, and uh, we were just I was discussing you know whether or not to to enter into Binance because I was just saying you know I had I had the feeling that you know as soon as Binance uh, this this uh, um, you know as soon as they open back up their exchange this thing was going to go parabolic and you know. This thing finally, we, we've set a new high. Um, so obviously, Binance, this is bullish. Binance, Binance Coin is very, very, very bullish. I'm glad I did buy into it. And he, by the way, he advised that I that I do buy into it, so he was right as well. Um, but uh, um, this is very, very bullish, guys. This is uh, there's no question about it. Um, we, Binance, like uh, like back when, like many coins, was bouncing along the 21 day EMA, this yellow line here um, for quite a long time. Once we had that decisive break below it, of course, we came back down. We had a nice buying opportunity here. I bought uh, down here at about. Um, um, or actually, I think I bought at 19.2. I don't even think I acknowledged this chart. I think I bought it at 19.2. Um, but uh, or, or anyway, I don't remember exactly. Um, but I did buy somewhere down in here, guys. Um, and uh, you know, and I'm glad I did. Um, but uh, but yeah, the, we've now taken out the prior high. So Binance is now at new all-time highs, guys. This is very bullish. The trick here is now that we have taken out the all-time high. The trick is finding the the next area of resistance. How high can this thing go? I'm looking at the prior high at approximately 20, 25, 25. I'm just going to use the the body of the prior candle here. That should act as support. That's what I that's what I want to see acting as support. We have yet to see a daily candle open and close above this here. By the way, guys, so you know this is still take this with a grain of salt. If this does close above here, you know that'll be very very bullish. But I, I I need to see a retesting of 25, 25, and I need to see that start to act as re, as support. And if that does start to act as support, guys, that'll be your buy signal. That's going to be a very, very, very bullish sign. Um, and of course, um, you know, this thing, we'll have to wait and see how this thing ends up playing out. But I need to see 25, 25 start acting as support. Next area of resistance. Typically, when you have an all time high like this, it's tricky to try to find an area of resistance. To do that, I try to find, I try to draw a line and see if I can find a, uh, um, you know, a line here that was acting as an ascending uh, resistance line here um, on a parabolic move like this, you know, which we've been in, which, you know, Binance Coin has just been extremely bullish, you know, for basically all of all of 2019 um, and this line right here is the closest I can come to it this was you know acting as an a, a very strong ascending resistance line all the way up here um, almost I mean just just a, a such a bullish looking coin guys dude finance coin I just I really, I'm really very bullish. So anyway, I don't want to get into that. I don't want to, I don't want to oversell it here. Um, but so what I do typically in a, in a situation like this, guys, is I'll look at this. I'll draw a line straight up. So yes, this did act as as resistance all the way up. So I'm going to draw this straight up, and then obviously, so this I would expect somewhere in here to act as resistance again, and then I try to find a cross to see if I can find some confluence somewhere with that line. And to do that, I draw your fib extension, and I go from the low. To, and of course, this was the first major retracement that we had uh, from this parabolic move. So we go to the, the prior high, which was here, and then, of course, back down to the low. If you guys, uh, I know those of you that are familiar with Fib Extension, do you know this? But I'm talking to those that aren't really, uh, that aren't much traders, um, that, you know, that don't trade very much. They don't understand it. Um, so this is, I, I'll draw a Fib Extension like this, you know, based on the low, based on the prior high, and then the the, uh, the bottom of the correction until we went, uh, until um, price bounced here. Um, and then I look at each level, each Fibonacci level, and say this, the each one of these are potential areas of resistance. Because remember, I don't have anything else to look at. We're at an all-time high. I have nothing else to look at here. So I'll look at confluence between this line here, <clears throat> excuse me, and a Fibonacci level. And of course, the next area of confluence from where we are would be just coincidentally or not so coincidentally could be right here around the 618 fib level that's a real possibility we'll have to wait and see but any one of these are areas of resistance we've broken above the 382 here so the next area of resistance possible resistance i want to say is about 2895 let's call it 29 dollars right around here and of course, remember anywhere up in this line here could be resistance. And then the next major fib level would be about 3146. Could be another major area of resistance. I would expect 3146 to act as resistance. Typically, the 618 does. Um, so yeah, these are the areas that I'm looking for possible resistance points. And if they do start acting as resistance, you know, as a trader, those are the areas that I'll sell as a long-term holder. Which remember, guys, I am both a trader and an investor. So I've got. Binance coin in my long-term hold portfolio that I will hold no matter what. And then, of course, I trade with it as well. As far as my trading portfolio, I will be looking um, 
to, I'll be looking to take some off the board at about 29, 28.95, and then a little bit, I'll probably close at about 31.46, depending on how this ends up playing out. And of course, my stop loss is right below here at about 20. I've raised my stop loss from my buy. My stop loss is sitting right below here at approximately 24.75 ish. I usually keep my stop pretty tight. If you wanted to, down here at 23.42 would be a more logical stop loss. Just depends on how much profit you want to secure for yourself. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap BNB there. Very quickly looking at Ethereum, guys, bullish, bullish, bullish. Um, this was, I was expecting a breakdown here. Now, could this be a throwover? Could this be a leading diagonal that we're just getting that throwover now and then coming back down? Yeah, that's a possibility, but typically you don't see a throwover like this at all. And you definitely don't see it penetrating an area supply zone, which we do have. We did have one, as I pointed out, you know, every time I talk about Ethereum, between about 230 and 110. Now, we have yet to decisively break above that supply zone, even though we've broken above it here by a wick. We have yet to decisively break above that supply zone because, again, what it, by definition, by my definition, by, by a lot of people's definition, but uh, you know, certainly the one that I follow is a daily candle, both opening and closing above before I call that a decisive break. So we have yet to break above that supply zone yet. That being said, we are sitting in it where so we haven't had a strong rejection. That is bullish. And we are, we are at uh, uh, prices currently um, the highest it's been since October of last year. So again, very, very bullish. If we can break above this zone decisively, in other words, if we can break above 230 decisive, uh, <clears throat> actually it's about 232. If we can break above through, uh, a daily candle, both opening and closing above 232. Again, that's going to be a bullish sign. That'll be your sign. If you haven't already bought, bought, it would be very risky doing where it is uh, or buying where it is. I would, I would wait for that confirmation of a daily candle, both opening and closing above that 230. To the downside, I would look for support where prior resistance was, or actually support was down here at 185, then 185 acted as resistance. Then we broke above and 185 started acting as support. That's where I would look for support if and when, uh, not Bitcoin, if and when Ethereum decides to drop, I would look for support about 185-ish, somewhere thereabouts. But if we can clear this zone, guys, if we can clear up above this zone, and especially if the bottom of this zone here, which was acting as resistance, starts acting as support at about 210-ish, if, if we come back and retrace in 210, it bounces off 210 and that starts acting as support, Again, that would be an extremely, extremely bullish sign. As of right now, again, until Ethereum gets an opening, if you have not already bought into Ethereum, if you have, I'd raise your stop loss. If you haven't, I'd be a little risky doing right now, And again, until we have a daily candle, both opening and closing above 232, in my opinion. And let's finally uh, end with the coin that everybody loves to hate, Ripple. Um, Ripple is a bullish guys, just bullish. There's no question about it. Everyone had been waiting for this. Remember, we had a, a uh, you know a nice wedge. We had a small wedge here. I've already taken away the line from the larger wedge that everyone was expecting a major parabolic move. That was back in March. It didn't happen. It just fizzled out. Remember, I talked about we had this major area supply zone between 38 cents and 40 cents, guys, that we had to get above. Of course, it had been rejected numerous times here in the past, and we finally have cleared above it. We've had a daily candle now open above this zone, and what we need is to have a daily candle close above this zone, above 40 cents. If we have a daily candle close above 40 cents today, guys, again, that's going to be an extremely bullish sign. If you have not already bought into uh, to Ripple, I'd wait for a pullback, maybe pulling back to 40 cents. I want to see 40 cents start to, act, start to act as support on the daily chart here. And again, if that does happen, I think that'd be a good buy. Um, and there's not a lot of resistance until we do start getting up here to between about 47 and 50 cents. Uh, between 47 and 50 cents, there is some resistance here. We can see that that area acted as support in the past. Then it went from support to resistance and back to re re support and back to resistance and until we finally ended up breaking down. And it ended with resistance right here with a strong rejection on December 23rd. And then, of course, we just came back down, you know, and all hell broke loose. But, uh, but yeah, right now we're, we're looking at that zone again, guys. I wouldn't be surprised to see Ripple jump back up here, possibly, you know, wicking into 47 cents again. Um, again, it's a little risky, a little bit of a risky play but uh you know i've 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 held ripple as a hedge for quite some time you guys know that um i have not sold it but i typically i don't trade it it's just one of those coins that i have you know a uh, a, a small relatively small position in my long-term whole portfolio and i just kind of forget about it because as i said it's a decent hedge but it is looking bullish right now we have now cleared this major area supply zone here the next major supply zone is between 47 or not supply zone but the next major area of resistance is between 47 and 50 cents in my opinion guys um but right now we're kind of stuck between the two and it's a little bit of 
of a risky play. I think if it comes back down and bounces off 40 cents, that'll be your buy signal, in my opinion. For now, a little bit of a risky play, but you know, hey, this thing could just go. There's a lot of money behind Ripple, a lot of big names behind Ripple, and so I typically, even though, again, it's the coin everybody loves to hate, I, I typically don't want to bet against it. In the long term, I don't think Ripple, I, you know, I have my doubts whether or not Ripple is going to be around. Maybe it will, but I have my doubts. But in the short term, I think this thing has a very good likelihood to pump. Um, you know, again, if Bitcoin corrects, Ripple is going to correct as well. But overall, you know, us, us transitioning into a bull market, I do think this has a, uh, the potential to pump, in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap things there, guys. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, would appreciate an upvote if you have enjoyed this content. Until next time, guys, please trade safe. Take care of yourselves. This is working. Signing out.